Hello and welcome. I am Annette Reader from thebiblicalnutritionist.com and today it's about answering your questions. This has become my favorite video of the week because I get to share with you answers to what you desire. And it's all about learning more about our biblical health. And today the questions are all about the Bible diet. I'm so excited about this because it means you're looking for answers, you're looking to use the scripture for some answers to your health, and that's when change happens. That's when transformation happens, which is what we talk about in our 40-day transformation course. So let's get started, but before we do, be sure and hit the subscribe button and the, and the bell next to it so you get notified every time we post new videos. And believe me, once a week is always a Q&A video that you do not want to miss. And if you want to get your questions answered, please join our Facebook group, Biblical Nutrition Academy. What you can join once you have downloaded the seven steps to amazing biblical health, which you'll find on our website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com. These are all free, no cost involved, but it will get you started in understanding what is the Bible diet, what is biblical health. And that's why I'm here, is to teach you these steps. Now, Let's look at question number one. I'm trying my best to follow the Bible diet for the last 18 months, only eating food, rarely eating processed sugars, honey or fruit sugar instead. I settled on two meals a day, yet my weight is not going down at all. Although my blood pressure is at an acceptable level now. This was submitted by Michael. Michael, this is fantastic. This is super. For your blood pressure to respond positively is a really good marker that things are working. You see, blood pressure, as you know, is an indicator of healthy blood vessels, less heart risk of disease, and other health challenges. You know, this is no small feat to do this without medications. So give yourself credit. If you would have had blood work done prior to starting this, you would probably see a lot more changes in the positive as well. The weight going down is going to happen. Don't give up. See how much fiber you are eating. And what is also important is the health of your microbiome. As we improve the health of our microbiome, it's easier for our body to lose weight. One way to do that is to take a supplement of digestive enzymes. Many times we have something that's inhibiting our health because we don't have the enzymes to break down our food. And this is really important. And so what I want you to do is look into what you're eating. Are you eating healthy microbiome foods? Are you taking a digestive enzyme? I would try it every meal for at least 30 days. A digestive enzyme needs to have all of the enzymes necessary to process every food category. Your carbs, your fats, your protein, legumes, all of those. Some of them leave out one category. I actually will put a link down below to the ones that I use and you can look at those and see how they compare with what you're doing. Now, another indicator is where is your measurements? Hopefully you took your measurements before you started as well. So there's a lot of things that we can track, you know, how well we're doing besides just the scale. As you know, probably muscle is heavier than fat, but yet it takes up less space. And so we could be losing inches yet not losing weight. Now, I get it though. You want to lose weight and I agree with you. It will come and I really highly recommend if you're not already in our Biblical Nutrition Academy Facebook group, join us in there. We can talk about it more there, but more importantly, joining our membership group, which is coming up in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, where you can join our membership group and we can talk you know, together about this and make sure you are tracking to lose the weight you're desiring to lose. So a lot of options there, a lot of different ways of measuring weight loss. I hope this has been very helpful for you. Number two, I like the idea of food not being an addiction because you will eat too much of one thing. Does that really cause inflammation? This was submitted by Mike. Now, let's, let me just think about your question and let me, let's just talk about it. So eating too much of any food does not necessarily cause inflammation, but it can lead to malnutrition. Our microbiome is very unique. It's unique for each one of us. Your microbiome is different than mine. If I live in Missouri, it's different than if I lived in Maine. There's no two that are the same. 
Yet, if we eat carrots every day, we're not going to have inflammation. If we eat sugar every day, we are definitely going to have inflammation because it's how we're building our microbiome. The stronger and healthier our microbiome is, the more likely we will have less inflammation. In fact, it's been proven as you improve your microbiome, inflammation goes down. So let me just say, so a food addiction to carrots, no, I don't think it's gonna cause you inflammation. A food addiction to sugar and chocolate, yes, very likely could. We need to eat a wide variety of foods. Otherwise, we'd still be in the wilderness eating manna and quail, but we're not. Even when he had the Israelites step out of the wilderness, he promised them seven of the most health-promoting foods ever, the promised land foods. He didn't want them to stay on a, um, a mono diet. He wanted them on a variety of foods because he created so many foods, different places on our tongue to enjoy the different foods because he is a God who loves us. He is a God who wants us to be satisfied in his creation, therefore satisfied in him. So inflammation is something we really need to look at. It's because we have a dysbiosis in our microbiome, therefore it contributes to inflammation throughout our entire body. Even being overweight is inflammation. Inflammation breeds inflammation. So something has to change and it starts with one, don't let any food become an addiction, which is what you're referring to in this question. And two, rebuild the healthy, healthy right Rebuild the healthy microbiome with God-designed, high-fiber, highly nutritious foods. That's where it happens, and that's where the healing begins. Great question. Glad you asked. Number three. Oh, what a blessing it was to stumble across this video about the Bible diet. An answer to my prayer. Where can I find your book? This was written by Becoming Virtuous. First of all, I love your title. It speaks so well. Second of all, I've actually written seven books. Now, specifically, you're asking about the Bible diet. I haven't titled any of my books by that title, but I'm going to, so be watching for that release. This is the book that started everything, The Treasures of Healthy Living Bible Study. This book takes you from Genesis to Revelation. It's gonna teach you the three principles and how to apply it to all food categories. It's gonna teach you everything about the different laws of scripture. Do they apply, do they not apply? It's just going to be an in-depth course so you too can understand what does the Bible say about healthy living? Well, it's all in here. Another book that I have is called The Treasures of Health Nutrition Manual. That's like an encyclopedia. You could read it by topic or you could read it from front to back. It's gonna cover food, supplements, women's health, men's health, children's health, a healthy home, all of that. It's an encyclopedia of good information. Now, another book that I have, which we've already mentioned here, is The Healthy Treasures Cookbook. I'm actually on my third cookbook because I take this and I write notes and it gets dirty in the kitchen uh, because I use this all the time. I use this all of the time because it has good recipes. So this is another book. Uh, another book that you may not be familiar with is The Satisfied Baking with Whole Grains. This is going to share with you some of my favorite whole grain recipes, just um, a lot of goodness that I enjoy, and just to teach you what happened to our grain and why is it considered a bad food when it could be a good food. So just a really good, just a small book, fun read, great recipes, and just a delicious addition to your collection. I have more, I've got the Proverbs 31 Prepper book, how you can be ready no matter what. If it's a power outage, if it's a political unrest, if it's just illness, a job loss, you can always feed your family well if you're prepared. I love being a prepper. So that's just an idea besides the Daniel Fast book that I have as well. So a lot of good information, but what happens is, these are all an understanding of the Bible diet. The Bible diet is just applying biblical principles, specifically the three principles that I teach in every book, and especially in our 40-day transformation course. That's where we really get into those three principles and also what's going on in our mind. So just wanna share with you, it's not just a simple eat this, don't eat that. It's learn more about the word, learn more about how God is speaking to you, how you can apply it to your health. And that's how we get the benefit, the full blessing of the Bible diet. So thanks for asking. Number four, I fasted over a month off of everything but grass fed beef. One day I started again on addictive food and had to go fast again. Not so simple. Submitted by Hobo on Wheels. Well, I love your name. I wonder if it has anything to do with are you in an RV or any of that type of lifestyle? We're so looking forward to that. 
You see, fasting is a blessing to our digestive system along with every system in our body. It brings healing. Yet, when we end a fast, the best foods to bring in are gonna be your high fiber, nutritious foods such as vegetables, fruits, legumes. Now, these are necessary for building the microbiome. Yet, they are typically not your addictive foods. So I have to ask, why did you bring in the addictive food? Were you just testing yourself? That's kind of like um, an odd test when you already know you're addicted to it. And sometimes it can take a long time to break an addiction. Let me ask you also, when you fasted, were you truly trying to break that addiction? Or were you just trying to see how long you could go without it? Because there's a difference there and it's all in the thinking. In the seven steps to biblical health, which is a free download from our website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com, you are gonna get access to the Hunger Satisfied Journal. We've actually just updated this to improve it because it's a work in progress and we keep getting uh, better results and better results from the people who use it. I, I really suggest that you go and check that out. Then join our BNA coaching, which is coming up very soon. Join that so we can talk about this in, in the coaching format and we can see what's going on with the addiction. What is the addiction? How are you eating? And then how are you trying to overcome that addiction in a spiritual and a physical aspect? This is really key is to have a coach walk you through this. And so we're gonna be doing some group coaching in the BNA coaching group. Now, besides that, join the BNA Facebook group. So the Biblical Nutrition Academy Facebook group and we can talk about it there as well. The important thing is when we fast, we, if you want to really get the blessing of breaking an addiction, you have to bring in the spiritual aspect and that is relying on God to help walk you through this. That is why the journal helps. It helps you to journal what is God saying to you and how are you responding? Many times we say, oh, yeah, I'm listening to God, but then actually you kind of close the door and like, yeah, I heard that, but I'm not gonna do it. Let's see what's really going on. And it all starts up here in the brain. It's in our thoughts because our thoughts drive our actions and our actions create the results. And that's what we talk about in the coaching group. So that's why that is so, so vital to be at a part of that group so you can get that coaching so you can really nail this and get it finalized and move on with a very healthy, happy life. I hope this has been helpful to you, Mr. Hobo on, or Mr. or Mrs. Hobo on Wheels. I don't really know which one. And so thanks for asking that question. Now, let me just say, these questions are important because they matter to you, so they matter to me. If for some reason you feel like, well, that's not really what I meant, Annette, can you answer it again? You just need to message me. You just need to get it you know, either on our Facebook group send it to me again, say, hey, Annette, this is what I meant, and we'll talk about it again. Definitely joining our coaching group, which is the BNA Coaching, and then you can definitely get some good Q&A back, back and forth between the two of us and really start seeing the results you're looking for. For all of you, I just wanna say thanks for watching. This is a chance for me to share with you God's recipe for excellent health. And remember, the very first ingredient always in that recipe is that God loves you. He created you for a purpose. He's loved you from the moment of conception. He created you in his image so that you could have a relationship with him. And no matter what happens around us, no matter what happens in our world, he is always there. He is always faithful. So thanks for watching. I am Annette Reader from the Biblical nutritionist.com here to serve you.